interactive Q&A with our artists. So get your questions ready. We'll see you soon.
everyone out there, this is Ken Susi here at Fishman. Uh, we're doing another every you everything you hear is true live broadcast, and also you can find us on iTunes or Spotify for this exact event on our podcast. So um, you can listen to it in your car. You can watch it on YouTube. Please head over to our YouTube page, like and subscribe, comment. So today we have a very special guest. But before I announce who who it is, I'd like you guys to all show up. Uh, basically to the Fishman YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, whatever account that it is you want to view this on and ask some questions. I'm looking at the questions here. We're doing a live interactive Q&A, so just feel free to jump on in. But before we get going, uh, I want to show you, uh, basically we have a website. If you have any questions with regard to any of the, the, the topics that we're talking about as far as our products go, you can go to www.fishman.com. You could see all this, all of our cool gear and uh, all the specs for each set of gear. So guys, I am going to announce our guest today. It is Angela Petrelli. How are you doing? How's it going, Ken? Good to see you. I mean, I'm living the dream. How are you doing? I'm good, you know, cooped up here in quarantine. Plus we've had some fires here in, in beautiful Los Angeles. So it's it's been a bit smoky, you know, <laughs> but, but hanging out and, you know, doing the best and, you know, just living living and, and, and playing music yeah. <laughs> so guys if you have any questions for angela here she's on her we're actually broadcasting across our socials but also hers too so if you want to ask just come show up ask some questions and i will flash it on the screen and i'll read it off to angela she can't see your questions but uh speaking of the air quality how like i mean are you guys choking over there or is it all right the the wildfires are out of control last week last week was pretty or i want to maybe two weeks ago it was nuts particularly up in san francisco they had a they had a bunch of them up there and and some friends of mine who live up there were sending me photos and i mean this guy looked apocalyptic it was oranges and reds you know stuff you see in like dante's inferno it was crazy um but but you know things are better now and and you know thanks to the first responders and folks who who go and and you know making sure to keep us all safe that's awesome know? that's awesome yeah so what have you been doing all this time that, uh, you know, with all these fires and the COVID situation, like what, it, what is it that you've been doing with your extra time? Well, I mean, I, I gotta say it's, it's, it's been busy and I am so incredibly thankful to, to be a busy musician. Um, these days been teaching a lot on Skype, which I absolutely love. Um, I've got, I've got a lot of really, really awesome students and it's, it's been fun. Like, okay, you know, I got a student, Hey, I've always wanted to learn this David Gilmore solo. And I'm like, geez, you know what? It's probably time I learn how to play that one too. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. They keep me on my toes. I love it. So been teaching a lot. Um, got an Instagram channel again, playing some of my favorite covers and been doing a lot of that, a lot of posting there. Um, been going to Norman's Rare Guitars. So an awesome, awesome guitar shop. Those of you who are guitar players out there, if you've heard of this incredible, I, it, it, it's a mecca of awesome guitars i i so, definitely i definitely want you to talk about that but not to interrupt yeah. uh david yeah. is asking jumping in a fan of yours hi angela please can you tell me about uh the guitar that you're using and how important is the guitar to you when you're writing and performing Ooh, i, lo I love a good like multi-question question <laughs> so many layers um, David, no, I, I love it. We're, we're, we're getting to the good stuff. Um, so, so right here, what I've got, I'm sure we're going to be playing it later. So this is my, this is my American Deluxe. So this, I believe 99 or 98 is the year of this, this Strat, this Fender Strat that I absolutely love. What I've gotten here are Fishman Fluence, the Strat style pickups. And I got to tell you, I was doing a gig back when gigs were a thing. I don't know if you guys remember back when gigs were a thing last year. Um, I went down to Austin, Texas, my buddy, Eric Tesmer, a uh, great, great blues guitar player out of Austin, Texas. You guys check him out. He's great. Um, he was doing an album release party and he had me come out and, and play a few tunes with him at the, at the gig. And I, I brought this guy along and Texas, particularly Austin is a big strat place and was stopped by quite a few guitar players afterwards saying, please tell me what pickups those are. Those things sounded great. So, um, that's what that I I I love. I love they're super clean and quiet, which is which is great. And they're super punchy too. I I just so that's that's been a strat. I've been playing a lot here. Um, as far as the songwriting, I am big into playing the tune first. I feel like lyrics come later, at least for me. Um, 
but the music always comes first and then from there you weave in melodies that's how i that's how i've done it and then with my band roses and cigarettes that's how we used to do it too so it's fun stuff it's fun stuff great question david <laughs> Well, he also has a follow-up uh, question. Can you sing a song on the guitar for me, and will you dedicate it to me, Angela? <laughs> so, you know, I'm sure, you know, <laughs> one, of the, one of these days, David, come to a show. We'll, we'll make it happen. That's what I'm saying. She could get right in your face and sing directly to you at the gig. You have to pay I the mean, money. I just eye contact, <laughs> like no blinking. Yeah. Like, right there. perfect. That's, <laughs> Thanks, that's... David, for the question. That's so awesome. Uh, so basically, uh, what I wanted to ask you is, to your point about uh, your social media and all the platforms and stuff that you're going live across, I wanted to understand, like, I mean, obviously, you've been a traveling musician. You've come to Boston a bunch of times with your old band, with your old band, Roses and Cigarettes. But yeah. what is it like being a musician nowadays? Uh, I mean, obviously, I want to, I want you to discuss, like, what it's like to play the gigs. But I also want to talk about, like, you've, you've made tremendous strides as far as, uh, creating a, the hype and the viewership around your social platforms. So let's talk about like the two sides of music now for those that don't know. You know, I think it's a really, really important thing um, nowadays, particularly with having good social media presence, consistency. That's the big thing with, with getting, you know, I don't want to say like getting viewers. It's such a, it's such a strange thing to me because I just love what I do. I just love what I do and I just love to play. So I, I post these videos just because, okay, I really love this particular Led Zeppelin track. I love how Jimmy Page played this, or I love how Patty Griffin did this on the acoustic guitar. I got it. You know, I, I, I got to go and play this. These are all things that inspire me to play. So I think with social media, what's really, really important is first and foremost, being true to yourself. That's first and foremost. Because when you are true to yourself as an artist, as a musician, whatever you are, whether it is in the musical arts or not, staying true to your vision and who you are as an artist, that is what's going to lead people to to want to find out who you are. And I know it's a cliche thing to say, but you're the only person who's you in the world. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so you know, it's, it's important to show, to show who you are. And, and, you know, likewise, when you're on stage too, and, and, and playing to play the music you like, write the music you want to hear and play the music that you want to play. Cause again, that authenticity, that's what drives people to want to know who you are. And, you know, these are folks that are going to go and support you at your shows and you're going to buy your t-shirts and, you know, who are going to buy your music. So again, just being authentic and true to your vision playing the music that you want to play i think is just the most important thing you know yeah i was actually gonna say too we we have a lot of uh female guitar players on the fluence roster but i mean i I have to ask you even with the comments and stuff i know that i've I've looked at your comments there's a lot of positivity going on when with your playing and talking about you know what gear you're playing and whatnot but like what is it do you ever get any negative stuff or or positive stuff is it always positive or is it always negative i mean obviously when you when you go live on social media you're always kind of subjected to negative comments and positive ones what what are some of the things that you've you've kind of seen so you know i i have made it a rule i don't read youtube comments i don't do it i just don't do it because it can be a cesspool of gross and there could, you know, there, but here's the thing. I mean, with life, you're going to get positive and negatives with everything. And, you know, I had someone tell me once if, you know, if you're getting some haters, you're probably doing something right, you know, because not everyone's going to like what you do. And that's okay, folks. Not everyone is going to like what you do. As long as you like what you're doing, that's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. Follow that voice, follow that authenticity, follow your vision. That's the most important thing. But yeah, I mean, of course, there's going to be like, you know, she's playing that E minor seven chord wrong. And I'm like, okay, dude. That's what I'm saying. There's so Sorry, many, man. there's so <laughs> many guitar snobs out there. They'd be like, oh, like the finger fingering on that wasn't correct. It's like, yeah, like she should be using her pinky here <laughs> instead of this. That's what okay. I figured. You know, like whatever makes you feel better, whatever yeah. helps you sleep with my dude. Like, yeah. I, don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like sorry. I, I was baiting you for sure because, like, <laughs> everything that I do, like, people will come in on my playing and I'll be like, yeah, it's because I've had like 10 drinks while I'm on stage. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm not going to play. I, if I hit 70% of the notes, I think we're in good shape. <laughs> you know, and here's the thing, too. Like, that is part of being human. Like, if you mess up, that's just part of being human. Like, those little, 
those little moments of being human where perhaps you mute a string you didn't mean to, or maybe you played this riff maybe an extra little bit too long, or maybe you played the flat five and you meant to play the five in a riff or that sort of thing. These can also be happy accidents in recording. I know a lot of times I leave those in, those little bits of like, you know what, that's human. I don't wanna clean that up. Um, if you listen like David Gilmore and, 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 and gosh, I, I believe it was the solo in, was it? No, it wasn't shine on you crazy diamond. Oh, this is going to bug me now there. Um, um, have a cigar. I believe the solo and have a cigar. You can hear an open B string and he's doing like first position E minor pentatonic, um, over at the 12th fret and he hits an open B string. You're like, Hmm. Perhaps that was a, a bit of, of humanness and it's so beautiful. And you can tell they, they, they left it in, you know, but he's just in the moment. So those, those, those times where you're in the moment and you're playing, if you happen to hit a bad note too, you know what? You're in the moment and you're, you're, you're just, <laughs> and you're playing too. And my guitar teacher would always tell me, he goes, listen, you make a mistake on stage, just do it again. And people are going <laughs> to think you meant to do it. So I do that all the time. If I'm soloing, I'm like, oh, ugh. All yeah. right, that was a clam. Let me just do that again. <laughs> you, know? you have so many shows to play. That's what I tell my band all the time. I'm like, well, I'm like, listen, guys, I might have messed up, but I owe you tomorrow. Like, we have three, we have like 200 more shows this year. I'm totally cool. I'm, I'm good for it. You know, it's <laughs> fine. It's like, I will hit that E minor seven and I will play. I'll play it with the right fingerings, I promise. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Roger <laughs> Wilson is uh, just hit us up and he says, Fishman triple play and Dorsey here writing and recording more than ever with the TP and making up for lost time. Uh, Roger, that that's awesome. I'm so glad you're enjoying the triple play. Thank you for endorsing our product. I, I can't talk enough about how great the triple play stuff is. We obviously have Thomas McRockland doing takeovers here and here and there on the Fishman site. And he's just so great at showing off that product. And, um, you know, obviously there's a lot to learn. Well, Angela, have you actually tried the triple play yet? I tried it. Very briefly, the last time I was actually up to see you guys in uh, in Boston, um, it's it's really really cool and just sounds really neat. And geez, it's it, you know, you're a one man band. There's so much stuff going on. There's so much you can do. Um, it, it it was a blast. I did I did get a sneak peek before you guys released it. I thought it was pretty. It was pretty sweet. Very very cool stuff. Yeah, I was just flashing the triple play on the screen for those of you that don't know it. So speaking of for those that don't know it, I mean. Not many people may know you on our Fishman channel. I mean, you've obviously appeared a bunch of times uh, live with us, and you've done plenty of. Uh, uh, obviously, we've reposted a lot of the stuff that you've created. But where do you where do you come from? And I want to know a little bit about like how you started, how did you get going, how did you learn guitar? Do you mind talking about some of that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I I was born and raised in Los Angeles. I hear that we are unicorns because I guess there aren't too many people who are native Angelinos. Um, I'm one of them. So, so born and raised in Los Angeles, uh, picked up the guitar. I was nine years old. My mom plays a little bit and she would play a lot, um, for my, for my brother and I, when we were kids. And I remember watching her play, I must've been like four or five and watching her play and going, I can do that. It was just like breathing. I'm like, I know, like music is going to be something that's going to be a part of my life. I, I knew it. Um, you know, wasn't necessarily sure it was guitar, but I knew it was going to be music. Um, wanted to play drums around eight years old. Was kindly, kindly leaned toward guitar because I think my parents didn't want a drum set in the living room, which I don't blame them. I get it. I think every um, guitar player wants to start off on drums first. <laughs> I so did. I so did. Um, so was was pl- politely coerced into playing guitar, and I'm really glad I did. Uh, picked it up at nine. I had a really, really awesome guitar teacher by the name of Jimmy Scott. Great, great musician. Taught me everything I know. Blues guy. He was. He played with Ike Turner and he just opened for some really, really great folks. Just really, really great guitarist, and I talk to, I still talk to him all the time. Um, but, but did lessons with him, you know, gosh, for eight, nine years and what he would do, you know, we, we learn, of course, okay, Angela, here's your scales. Here's how you play your chords, particularly your E minor seven. Um, but we would go and we would, you know, he would teach me chords, that whole thing, progressions of, okay, if you're in a, you know, you're playing blues, you're going to be doing a one, four, five thing. You're playing jazz, a one, two, five. So then there, there was one day in particular, one evening. I was about 16 and he goes, listen, I'm playing, I'm playing with this band down the street. 
how about you bring your strat and you can play a song with us? And I was stoked. It was like a Wednesday night. I'm 16. I'm like, cool. It's a Wednesday night. And I get to play in a bar at 16. I was just so excited. The dream. The dream. The dream. So I, um, so I went with him. I have my strat and I'm sitting in, you know, in the booth with my like soda. He's playing. They sound great. And they're done with their set and they, they, they go down and, and he comes up to me and he goes, listen, my hands are really, really tired. So you're going to play the next set with the band. I'm going to sit out. That's amazing. <laughs> and just threw me to the, and threw me to the wolves. So <laughs> I, so, so what I found out later was this was a rotating, you know, blues jam, you know, I think every Thursday or Tuesday, I forget, but different folks every day. So you never knew who was coming in and what songs you were going to play. So he threw me to the wolves. I didn't know these folks. I didn't know what songs we were going to be playing. It's just like, here you go, guitar player. Here are some folks you've never met, and let's make some music. So that's that's how I learned was just in the fire. Okay, sink or swim, you know. And it, it was a really, really great learning experience because from what we learned in our lessons, okay, now you apply it in a real-life setting with real-life musicians with songs. So use your ear, okay. This isn't an irregular, you know, one, four, five blues. Perhaps we were playing, like, say, the Allman Brothers version of uh, Stormy Monday. Notice how we're sliding up with these chords and we're getting these different inversions and these, you know, the, all, all of this stuff that, that you wouldn't necessarily have in a regular one, four, five. So, you know, some nights I would do great. Some nights I wouldn't do so great. And he was just such an awesome teacher. You know, after the gig, we would talk, okay, what are things that you did great? What are things you think you could improve on and, and, and be better? And, and I always now in my lessons, I, I just think of all the things that he taught me. And I try to be like one half of that great guitar teacher that he was to me. Because it, it's important. Yeah, you can sit in your room and play with a metronome. These things are important, folks. You got to do them. You got to know rhythm. You got to do all the things. You got to know your chords and your scales. These are This is important stuff. But applying it and playing with people, like that's where the magic happens. That's I would where the fruits of the labor come from. I would agree. There's a lot of time that you like cutting your teeth, learning how to, you know, learn how to solo, but then you have to put it into a improv uh, improv setting where I'm sure you had to do a bunch of jams, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. And, and most of the time, you know, at least when I was first starting, it was songs I didn't know. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, okay, how does so, this, okay, this thing goes like this. And they're not going to tell me the chords. They're like, okay, so we're playing in the key of G. It's going to be one, four, five, and watch out. There's a six that comes in in the bridge. Yeah. And then it goes to the two and then back to the one, okay? Yeah. And well, people like, are secretly battling, though, too. They don't want to help you out. They want to sound better than you, right? Oh, well, you know, it's, 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 an interesting, it's an interesting thing. Perhaps there are some folks that do that. You know, but the, the way that I look at it, I don't consider myself a competitive person when it comes to music. It is always a team mentality. Always. We are all there to lift each other up. Always. I'm, and I'm there's room on top for all of us. <laughs> if I'm on no the same need to be competitive. Yeah, if I'm on the same stage as you, I'm trying to beat you. Like like in uh, <laughs> Crossroads with Steve Vai and Ralph Macchio. I am like right? <laughs> I'm trying to send you to hell with my guitar. <laughs> but you'll probably win. You're Ralph Macchio in that in that scenario. Oh gosh. I mean, you, you got you got some skills, man. So you play a seven string, yeah? I play I play a seven string. Uh I have a signature ESP. It's it's fun stuff. And uh that actually yeah. led that, that led to my uh, that actually leads to my next question because I actually want to know this. This is like this is now fast forwarding. Like now that you're a skilled guitar player and you know how to I guess, uh, navigate a jam session or like a long jam. Um, yeah. now that you're kind of, I'm sure you're kind of over it, right? Like, do you sit there and you think about like, Oh, I didn't like mow my lawn or like, do you think about things on stage while you're waiting to play now? You know, it's, a, I will be honest. There have been times I'm a Laker fan. Okay. So there have been times where I'm at a bar and some, t listen, there are some jams where you phone it in. There are some gigs where you phone it in. We've all been there. We know how this goes. I'm not going to lie. Like there are some times where I am at a gig. I'm like, I want to watch the game. I or I'm gonna, like people watch. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Things happen. All of last year, the, the Bruins, the Boston Bruins were in the uh, Stanley cup finals. And I put an iPad on my monitor and I just, I called myself statue man. And I played guitar <laughs> hoping that they would win the Stanley cup while I was on stage. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I, I don't follow hockey as much. Did, yeah. did, did the Bruins succeed? 
Uh, no, they lost. They lost. They, so, oh, okay. so I blew all those gigs for nothing. At least seven gigs. For nothing. <laughs> you could have been at home watching the games. What the hell? Yeah. See, yeah. The fan. The fans were happy enough that I was up there. So I'll let everybody else entertain. Uh, okay. Rich. Rich Johnson is writing. E. F- e. Flat is real. E. Sharp. E. Sharp is real. Is real. Sorry. Friend. Yeah. E. Sharp is real. Yes. Okay. Do. You, Ken, are you familiar with this? With with the E. Sharp. Yeah. Yeah. Where you fall? Okay. Yeah. So here's here's how this starts. Those of you who are who are like, what 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 is that E number sign or E hashtag? What yeah, that's sharp. I messed e it up. Thing. It should have been a little B it's, it's for okay. flat. It's, it's early. <laughs> it's early. We're good. We're good. Yeah. It's early. Um. So I I the folks at Premier Guitar who I love them. Those guys are awesome. They they reached out to me. They're like, hey, we'd like you to write an article for 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 one of our you know for for one of the um publications to be really really great to have you of course they go you know jason uh over there he's listen right right on whatever you want you know so so cool kind of had free reign okay you know what i'm gonna do a weird scale i'm gonna write this about like the phrygian scale so that's so that's what i did is i is i wrote this this you know beginner basic 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 little lesson on the phrygian scale and how you can apply it that sort of thing so i (laughs) I, I, I get an email from this this gentleman who was very angry. And the reason why I think he was angry is because the email was written in all capitals. And you know someone's serious when an email is written in all caps. I would he like was, to think so. He was probably mad that you were just a better guitar player overall. I, 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 I don't know. Re- regardless, you know, I'm like, okay, let me let me read this and see what's going on. And he goes, listen, capital letters. I, you know, I, I went to three different guitar teachers and all of them told me that E sharp was not real. So if you can, you know, and I saw that in your lesson, you included E sharp in a scale and that's wrong and you're wrong. And if you can prove to me that you're right, I'm going to go to all of my guitar teachers that I paid money to, and I'm going to ask for my money back. Whoa. So, so this was, this was real. So of course I I'm like, Okay. I really wanted to be a smart, you know what, and, uh, you know, just send them the key signature of C sharp and F sharp and go and circle the sharp minor and go there. It is. <laughs> you know, I really wanted to. I did not. It was very kind. I'm like, listen, here's this and this. So anyhow, I had um, I had had a band rehearsal with my with my current band, the Patrulli Players, and two of my two of my band members are insanely um, they, they've got insane music degrees. And I knew that they would they would find this very funny. So I read them this email, and they we were all just getting a big kick out of it. And I had filmed the 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 whole thing, and we were talking about it, and it was just so funny. My my keyboardist Bobby Victor, who's an incredible incredible musician, and uh, Brett Grossman, who, who plays bass for me, he we we just went off and just talked about how E sharp is real. And in a minute, we 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 said okay well you know on in, in this key signature it's like this and, and and every key you have to have every note like you can't have f and f sharp in the same scale so that, that sort of thing again just in in complete layman's terms um sort of talking about this so i i posted it up on my instagram and and i just got so much feedback from it and i'm like you know what i'm gonna make a good thing out of this kind of awkward and weird situation with this certain gentleman who wrote this email i'm like i'm just gonna make a bunch of shirts so I made a bunch of E Sharp is real shirts, and uh, no way. Did you ever yeah, contact I that did. guy? And did he ever like? I did. I did, and you know, I had I had to throw in the key signature. I had to, and just like there it is, you know. <laughs> but here's this, and here's also why. And he still fought me on it a little bit. I'm like, dude, it's right there, man. <laughs> like I, E Sharp is right there on the line. You can see it. Um, but then you know, and then he's like, oh well, I actually spoke to one of my. Uh, one of my friends who's who's a has a PhD in music, and he said yes, that's correct. Wow! It's like, dude, I, I told you, man. Well, you Ro- buy a shirt by all means. <laughs> Roger Wilson is writing. Classical musicians will argue the point that there is a difference in a C sharp and a D flat. This is true. It depends on the key you're in. It depends on the key you're in. Like, if you are in the key of D flat, a C sharp does not exist. Exactly. If you are in the key of C sharp, a D flat does not exist. So really, it all depends on context. You should yeah. just take my approach. You just yell at people. <laughs> you know what? 
Hey, but but you guys are you guys are from Boston. Yeah, we're, we're Boston, and I also play in a metal band, so it's much easier to yell See? at somebody. <laughs> See. You could take over Absolutely. for me for about a year, and then and then we'll see if your attitude changes <laughs> towards fans. I know, right? I got to move about, what the hell, guys? You're playing the wrong chord. What's wrong? You got to play it like this. What the hell, man? Yeah, I'm, I'm in the parking lot. I see I see the, the E chord over here. You know, I punched him. I didn't like that. <laughs> That's pretty much my reasoning for everything <laughs> nowadays. So um, we have one question here that I thought would be fun. Here I don't know it. if you've ever been here. Uh, when do you come to Sweden next time, smiley face? Have you been to Sweden? When, I'll tell you what. When I'm allowed to leave my house <laughs> after this quarantine, I'm coming to Sweden. All right. All right. Be expecting. Yeah, I, I can't read your name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's, but, uh, okay, so let's talk about your earliest influences. Um, yes. Obviously, the thing that I love about you is that when I watch your Instagram, I keep obviously I keep my eye on everything that you're doing, but... Um, it's just so great to see that you're so well versed and your listening is very eclectic. You're always playing different stuff. Yeah. Obviously, 60s, 70s is a major uh, time period for you, right? I would say, uh, yeah, as far as guitar I, playing goes. I love it. I'm also a huge, I mean, I'm a huge 90s grunge fan too. I love Pearl Jam and Soundgarden and Alice in Chains. Um, that, whole, that whole scene, I love. There was some really, really great music that was coming out of that time. And bad yeah. guitar playing as well. So. You know, it's certain certain bands, perhaps you know, tuning wasn't essential. Right. We'll leave it. We'll leave it there. That's fine. <laughs> That's the sound, man. That's the sound. Yep. Um. But yeah, sixties and seventies are incredibly that, that that type of music incredibly influential to me. I'm a huge Zeppelin fan. You know, I love folks like Bad Company and Little Feet. You know, Hendrix, huge fan. Stevie Ray Vaughan you know, 80s, 90s guitars, right? But I'm also really, really big into like Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf, Bonnie Raitt, Patty Griffin. Um, I, you know, I, I don't believe, you know, when folks say, what's your, you know, your, your guilty pleasure? There is no guilty pleasure music. If you like it, if it inspires you to write, that's what you like. Own it. Own it. If that's what you like, own it. Um, I would agree with that. You know, yeah, because there's know, music, there's bad music that you can totally say yes, like I love that. Or when when you when I say bad, like there could be a pop song that is just so over the top, but you're like, you know what? That's great writing. How am I gonna deny that? Right? It is. It is. You know. But but for me, um, I was very very lucky to have fo um, folks who who listen to really really great music. My mom um, is another huge Zeppelin fan, so like you know Zeppelin. The Eagles, um, a lot of that type of stuff was on a lot as a kid. My dad's a big blues, you know, and singer songwriter fan. So, you know, that's where the Patty Griffin came from and the Stevie Ray Vaughan, um, you know, Deep Purple, that, you know, that, that type of thing, Montrose. So, I, God, I remember my dad playing that album like over and over again. Montrose is so Montrose. sick. Dude, Montrose is so good. I wish more yeah. people knew about Montrose. Yep. Montrose yep. is great, folks. Go and listen. It's really, oh. Before you go so deep, before you go go deep, I, you have a super fan, Ryan Fitzsimmons over at Fishman. Are there any <laughs> e <laughs> if are there any e, e sharp is real shirts left? And where can Ryan, people find them? Ryan, I got you covered. I got you covered. I'm gonna send you some. <laughs> um, folks, just reach out to me. I've got I've got I've got a pile. Reach out to me on Instagram. Yeah, or reach just out to me on Instagram. Or just give out your phone number. Everybody, yes. <laughs> write this down. Address. Just go. Text Angela um, right now. <laughs> yeah, shoot, shoot me, you know, you know, um, message me on Instagram, my website, Angela Patrulli music .com. Um, you can reach out there and contact, but yeah, I just, I, I screen printed some shirts, folks come by, say hi. Um, and that's, you know, that's an important thing too, with, you know, going back to social media and, and all of that. I love to engage with my fans, Yeah. you know, and the folks that are watching and are taking the time to watch these videos. Like, you know, a lot of times I'll, I'll be playing this particular strat. Like, wow, that thing sounds super good. What's in there? <laughs> well, you know, those are my Fishmer fluids. Or, man, I love the tone of that, you know, that overdrive pedal. What is that? Well, you know, it's my analog man Prince of tone that I absolutely love. Yeah. So, you know, these sorts of things, it's important. I, I like to, it's important to me to take the time to answer questions like that because, you know, that's helping folks discover their their music and, and their voice as a musician. So of course, you know, folks did that for me. Yeah. When I was learning how to play, when I would go to my guitar teacher, I would be at a gig and I went up to this guitar player, hey, what are the settings you have on that amp? I'm, I really, really love the tone. How'd you do it? 
And folks took the time to do that for me. So I really, really, it is important to me to make the time too. That's awesome. So, That's awesome. While, yeah. while we're while we're doing the whole uh, social media thing, guys, head over to the Fishman YouTube right now. So hit the like and subscribe button. Ask Angela a question. So um, we did hit we did hit kind of a nice sweet spot. People are losing it. I agree. Montrose is sick. Um, I'm flashing this on the screen. Screen. Rock Sammy candy. Hagar. Hell yeah, Rich. Rock yeah. Candy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what particular guitar? I mean, bands are important to you because obviously I can tell. Um, obviously we've just established that your mom's probably the coolest mom of all time. Yeah. And, and, um, so how does that, so, so is it band based? I, I, do you like, did you, do you listen to a song and then you're like, oh, I really like the solo or are there specific guitar players that you're targeting when you're learning stuff? You know, I think it's, it's, it's a little bit of everything to be honest, Ken. It's, it's, it's sometimes it's a solo and I'm like, oh, I love that. But also a lot of times too, and really when I'm listening to a track, a lot of the times I listen to the drums first and just, and I listen to that groove. Cause again, I'm a really rhythmic player. So I, I love playing in the pocket and playing around with, with, you know, how, how to manipulate the sound. And again, finding the place and the band, that is such a fun way for that. I love to play is okay. You've got someone on the two and four. Cool. You've got the bass doing this. Okay. Well, how can I uplift and be a good team member here and bring the song where it needs to be as a guitar player? Okay, sitting in and maybe doing this sort of thing. Say there's even another guitar player. Okay, they're, you know, up towards the top of the of the neck near the headstock. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit closer to the body and do like different inversions, that sort of thing. So these are all things that I listen to um, in songs. I mean, really anything that Stevie Ray Vaughan touched, I love. Oh. I love. He is just uh, he yeah. is one of my heroes, and you know, I'm I'm sad I never got to see him, but I'm so thankful that the music is around and the yeah. videos are around and all those interviews. Yeah. Um, the Texas Flood book that came out recently. Those of you who are fans of Stevie Ray Vaughan, really, really awesome, awesome biography. It's 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 great. But I, I I don't know. I listen to a lot of a lot of different aspects of music. You know, it could even be a baseline that I love. Yeah. You know, so, so I, I, my ear, my ear goes to a lot of different things. If it sounds good, I'm probably going to have it. That's, <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I, well, I've been keeping an eye, I've been keeping an eye on, uh, you know, our viewership now. And it seems like, uh, there's a lot of people watching. I know you have a guitar in your hand. Why let's, let's put you up to the challenge. Let's play. Let's, let's go over like, what are your five top, like favorite riffs of like, whatever it is. It could be any time period. Okay, I don't want to get I don't want to get you in trouble with with like any copyright stuff. Nah, you're good. You're co you're covering it, so it's not the original song. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. So as far as you know, with with Stevie Ray Vaughan, and I think one of my favorites is is Cold Shot. And again, it's just a really really basic. Just again, and it's a shuffle because the the line. If we're slowing it down, right? Just your regular pentatonic. But the wh what makes that tune is just the... Yeah, it's the shuffle in the background. It's the shuffle, man. It's yeah. the shuffle that works. So when you combine those two things together, again, thinking about time. So when we're talking there, what's happening? You're locking in with the drummer. And then what with, with Tommy Shannon up at, you know, playing the bass, right? They're all locking in. And I think that's what's really, really cool, particularly about that riff. Because think about it, like a shuffle, it's this beat. I mean, you feel it in your feet, you feel it in your chest, but think about it. And I say this to all my students too. We all have a natural heartbeat. We've all got a heart. So when, when we hear this kind of shuffle, that's what makes us nod our head. That's what makes us tap our feet and clap our hands and, you know, move around. So, so a riff like that... <laughs> It's just, I don't know. It's awesome. And it always gets folks and even other guitar players be like, ooh, okay, what is that? You know, other musicians. It's so damn cool. The best shuffle of all time for me, I, and, and we listen to this all time, and I always challenge every drummer to play it right. And they're, they're, every drummer always, like, get behind the kid and be like, I'm playing this right, but they're not, is uh, Rosanna, right? That's uh, the oh song Rosanna. God. Yeah. Yeah, the best shuffle of all time, I would say. Oh. <laughs> uh. For me, and then, and again, like just I, I know this isn't a riff, a, a guitar riff, 
But damn, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover, Steve Gadd. Oh, man, oh, do yeah. I love that. And if I played drums, <laughs> I would play that. I, I, would, I would have to, that would be on the top of my list to play. I mean, just think about cool rhythm and again, how it leads, you know, Paul Simon to go ahead and do his thing. It's just so, it's so damn cool how it, again, it just leads this really, be, really beautiful foundation for everybody to do what they need to do and tell the story they need to tell. It's great. Now, now that it's we're great. playing karaoke, it's hit us up with another, another awesome Angela riff that you, that it's inspired you or whatever to play. Let's see, as far like a riff that I wrote just, or like just something that, else? yeah, like timeless riffs that you, that are important. Stevie Ray Vaughan was the first good pick. Yeah. Like Stevie Ray, yeah, I mean. I can do this and you know. Like even yep. just that is <laughs> it's so it's so awesome. You're like, okay. Yeah. Tell me the story now. Like yep. those are the kind of riffs that I like where you just get in and you dig and you're like, ooh. Speak speaking of that riff too, I think Pearl Jam kind of bit that too in a song. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I love? Do you know what I love about you is that like if you were sitting in front of me, I know I, I know like my band set and I don't know any other songs. Like I play stuff here and there, but I'd have to learn it. You, I would just be like, all right, play this. All right, play that. <laughs> like, cause I know you know. <laughs> Those come from the days of, all right, Angela, you're going to go and hop on stage and you don't know, you know, you don't know anybody you're playing with or any of these songs. So I'll tell you what, can I can't tell you what I wore yesterday. But like I can play like <laughs> if you're like can you play this in this song by Incubus or something you're like wait hold on and then I can figure it out. <laughs> I love that I love that because uh my, I ask, I actually have a grunge band my bass player is kind of hacks away at the guitar but he knows every song so I'm always like hey play that for a second like we'll be we'll song write and I'll be like well play that song and he'd, he'd show it to me and oh, I'd be like yeah. oh that's cool. <laughs> yeah, my, my keyboard is Bobby Victor. It's the same thing like that guy knows like that guy really knows everything and it is nuts like we were we were jamming. And I'm like, hey, can you play? Uh, can you play Benny and the Jets? And he's like, sure. <laughs> like, can you play Bad Company by Bad Company? That's on Bad Company. And he's like, yeah, no problem. And he feels it. I love people like that. Right. Yeah, you're that. You're definitely that to me. So um, we have Nick Hanley asking, can you give us a little rock candy? Something like that. <laughs> Without the puns. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah. um Great. So Hendrix, what about uh Zeppelin? It seems like you play a lot of that on your uh on your Instagram. That's God. There's, here's the thing, there's so many. Even just okay, so if God, like man, talk about four folks. I mean, next to the Beatles, like four magical yeah. people coming together and creating something larger than themselves. I really think of the Beatles and I think of Led Zeppelin. Yep. I really do. I don't think there was a weak link in any of those bands, in any of them. No. Just, oh, it's just good <laughs> stuff. So, I mean, even just simply. Like, those, that is two chords. And again, it still hits that, that nerve of, please tell me more. Please tell me more. Like those two chords in and of themselves. So tell a story. I would say Great. it leaves you hanging. Cool. It's like re reading a really good book and or seeing yeah. a good movie and you're like, oh, I want to see the next one. I would agree. Yeah. The chords lead then, you into the next part. It's so, it's so, so good. And just even all of the covers that they did too, you know, I mean, if you think of Zeppelin one, that was, that was pretty much a cover album. <laughs> for the most part there was yeah. a lot of really really great uh just really really great stuff and and again just with all of their albums i mean there's something in there just for everybody and you can go and sit and at a first listen you hear it yeah and you're like wow that's great and you listen to it again I'm like wow i never noticed that before like how incredible is that and just you know jimmy page's use of open tunings and again of this exploration and talk about not playing things perfect oh yeah you know, the way that he attacked the guitar, say, is so different from someone perhaps like Jeff Beck or, you know, Eric Johnson or Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yep. It added to the character and that magic of, of that music. 
Yeah. Just incredible, incredible musicians. Bef- before we go on and talk about more musicians, let's talk about, let's uh, refresh everybody on what you're currently using. What are you using for pickups? Right here, I've got the Fishman Fluence single width. I love these damn things. I, I, I like when, when when Ryan sent him over, you know, he's like, check these out. And I, I've just, I've continuously been blown away. I use them all the time at sessions and at live shows. And they're so, they're so quiet too. They're just great. And they, and again, you could just get so many different versions of it. I'm just going straight through an amp right now, you know, with this stuff, you know, it's like, they're, they're, they're beautiful. They, they appear as well with, with pedals too. And just, I don't know. Yeah, talk about fan, sound. I just, I just love these. Yeah, I was gonna say, talk about uh, what you experience with other pickups as far as the sixty cycle hum. You know, I am. Some folks don't mind it. I'm one of those that does. I I do mind it because I use a lot of clean tones when I play for the most part. Um, so I want something. I want something that's not gonna buzz. I don't like buzz when I'm playing for my pickups. Um, I've just, I've been really, really pleased with these and truly, truly have been pleased with these and I've been really, really happy with them because they sound great clean, you know, just straight through amp like we're doing now, but they can go ahead, you know, and get some grit too, you know, I just, I'm, I'm just a fan of, of the roundedness of them and the clarity and just the sparkliness of of how these sound because they so tie in to not you know not only can they go ahead and do the you know the beautiful zeppelin type you know but they can go ahead and really crunch if you're wanting to do the you know the you know they can go ahead and do all that stuff too which is just i don't know they're killer i love them that's, and again, I'm not even using pedals. I'm going straight through the amp right there. That's awesome. Yeah, because not many people know that you know each set of fluence has two voicings or sometimes three. Mm-hmm. So in your case, you're getting the use out of like the clean, you know, yep. 50 Strat style, and then you know you get the overwound Texas uh, style on a sw- yeah. flip of a switch. So it's great. Exactly. Yeah. It's just right there and then ding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's quick, you know, it's a quick move, and I do it on stage a lot. Yeah. You know, when I'm playing, okay, I need something with a little more crunch, a little more bite, bam. Yeah. Just lift it up, done. Would you say Fluence has made you at least a 10 to 20% better player? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll tell you what, it's made me 10, you know, it's made me a lot less. It, it, it's taken that annoyance of yeah. the buzz, of the, well, of the pickup buzz away on well, you, stage, for sure. Well, de- yeah, but also definitely you don't have to bring, say, two guitars with you if you want to try playing one song to the next if one has more grit or one's cleaner, right? No, I have not. All right. So um, let's talk about some of the other fluid. Uh, sorry, Fishman products that you yeah. use. Um, you told you're a big fan of the acu- our acoustic line. Let's talk about some some yeah. of the stuff you use there. So every single I I, I am a proud proud Martin artist. Um, I did. You, you can check out this the stuff I did for the their their new SC thirteen E. Um, which also has some Fishman pickups in it as well, which is great. But I am a huge fan and I've been using them. God, I've been using Fishman products for like 15, 16 years now. I just love, I, I, I like, truly, even before we all started working together, I just, I love the stuff. It's clean. And my thing with the Fishman products is that they make the guitar sound as they should. They totally. really do. And, 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 and as a player and, and a purist, you know, I, I am a big fan of pedals. Do not get me wrong. I love that stuff. I love a good wah. I love a good fuzz pedal. I love all that stuff. But I really, really love the bare bone minimum of a guitar and what can it do? Because I think that's that's a great way to see if a guitar is awesome is how, you know, how it sounds acoustic. And particularly with the R-Spectrum DI, I love that thing. I use it for every single acoustic show I do. Every single one i love it it is that that beautiful little silver box and i can't tell you how many times i go to a show and the sound people will come up to me and they go thank you for bringing that it's so good what it does it's so good it's an acoustic imager it rocks it plugs in you plug into the guitar i know my guitar is going to sound like it should at a live show 
Cause we, cause you can't go and mic your guitar at a live show with, you know, 500 people, you know, and you're walking, you're jumping around and all this stuff. You're going to get feedback. It's going to be a mess, you know? So go ahead. I just, I, I love that R spectrum DI. It's great. I plug it in. I don't have to worry if my guitar is going to sound great. Cause I know it will. And that, that's it. That's and awesome. That's, it. that's awesome. You know, so I, I've been using that thing. God. For when you guys first, you know, brought it out was when I when I bought it and have been so so pleased with it, and I that, I still have it and it's been road worn and the whole thing. And I love it. <laughs> That's but, awesome. Um, yeah, I yeah. just so you guys know, I usually flash the the product up there, but just do us the favor, head over to fishman www.fishman.com so you can see product shots of this and and find these SKUs for sure. But I, yeah, you, I mean, it just pairs that particular pedal, the Aura, is a lifesaver as you just described. But I mean. Huge. When you pair it up with, say, a Martin guitar, it's like it's perfection, wouldn't you say? It really is. It really is. When you have, I, I like to call it just the the awesome. It's just a beautiful pairing because you have the Fishman pickups, and I use Matrix Infinities in all of my acoustics. Because again, it just makes the guitar sound as it should. It's 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 small. It's not an invasive pickup at all. Okay, you got your tone, your volume, you're done. Because that's the thing, too. When I play, I want ease, and I want it to sound good. Done. I don't need a million buttons. I got to press this and this and this and then move this up, and then it's going to sound great. Like, with, with, with your guys' stuff, I plug it in. I know it's going to sound good. I well, know it's going to sound good. Well, I like what you just said. It's, it's, it's not adding to the guitar. It's actually broadcasting or pushing out what the sound of the guitar is naturally. Exactly. It's exactly. not like a replica or this or that. It's like a, the exact guitar going out to the front house, how it's supposed you know, to sound. And that's, and that's important to me because I, I just love the sound of my Martin guitars. And I know the fish, like, I know the stuff is going to, has got me covered to having it sound as it should, you know, when it's, when you're, when you're playing out. So yeah, Matrix Infinity um, and the R Spectrum. And then my Loudbox Mini, if I'm doing a show, um, you know, with with some slight acoustic amplification, I bring I bring that guy too, and I love how little it is, and I love how I can just have my guitar on my back, <laughs> I have my gig bag with all my cables, and then I've got my loud box. Nice, done. yeah. And we, it's one trip, but I'm using my car a million times. It's great. Yeah, and you could actually plug a vocal into the loud box if need be yeah. in a pinch. Mm -hmm. And I have cool. the the um, I guess it was a limited edition one. It was white and black. Oh yeah, my loud box. It's it's sharp. It looks great. So you guys, you guys can't have what she has if you happen to go to the show, or just wait till we we redo that and you get a limited edition version of that. But. I know. I was telling Chris, I'm like, God, I just love that color scheme. It looks so sharp. It's great. <laughs> That's awesome. Right. Well, Nick Henley's asking real quick, not, not to quick uh, bounce over to the, back to the questions, yeah. but uh, Nick's saying that he loves the fluence pickups in the Greg Cock Reverend, Reverend Gristle Master. Do the S style pickups have different voicings like Greg's T style pickups? And I'll I'll start off that uh, that answer yeah. to that is um, every single set of fluence is different. Uh, especially with Greg where it's, you know, basically Greg steered the voicing for his particular signature. But yes, the, the, the general question is, is that, uh, the fluent strat pickups like Angela's playing has two voicings. One is voice one, which is clear and present. And it's just, it has a lot of warmth and the voice two, I think you would agree is like a hot Texas single coil where it's super aggressive, right? Yes. It's great. It's a gr it's aggressive in all the right ways. Yeah. It's aggressive in all the right ways. But I, I remember when we were at NAM this la this past year, um, those those telly pickups, oh man, are they awesome. <laughs> a lot of artists Yeah, like Tosa Abasi when he before he started using Fluence, he definitely liked our modern pickups. But he's like, uh pretty and he said it like this, he's like, you know, Greg Cox pickups are pretty amazing. <laughs> he's like, I wanna like I definitely want my pickups to have something like that in there and we're like yeah we'll do that for you and talk about just a wonderful human being and just a wonderful player oh greg he's, he's the coolest yeah yeah he's the coolest yeah he's 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 the best he's like a he's a he's a human jungle gym <laughs> it's like it's just he I has know, like 10 feet tall when i met him like oh my god i know such a tall person yeah. The, the comedy that constantly rolls out of him is pretty much the greatest. But uh, Nick's also asking any word on Fluence P90s. I'm just going to say maybe. <laughs> That's my way of saying maybe. We'll see what's up. Keep your eye out during uh, NAM time or the holidays. We'll see We'll see what happens with that. But, um, but yeah, so uh, let's talk about actual guitar influences, though. Like who... Yes. 
what's I mean, other than Stevie Ray Vaughan, Jimi Hendrix, I mean, we let's let's go pretty deep. Like, what are you? Who are the artists that really like excite you? Really excite me playing wise. Um, we've talked about we've talked about those. Jimmy Page, I think we can include in there too. Um, Dwayne Allman, Derek yeah, Trucks. Totally. I love playing slide too, so I absolutely love those players. Bonnie Raitt, I love. Um, Rory Block is great. Patty Griffin, I love too, as, as a guitarist as well as a songwriter. Um, man, Leslie West from Mountain. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. What about great this? Stuff. What about like the standard, like some of the guys, like um, you know Eddie Van Halen, Steve Vai. Were you into them, or was it more so? Meh? You know, for for me, I absolutely love the technique that's involved in their playing. You know, the Steve Vai's and the and Satriani's and all the I, I, I love the way that they play. To me, I I leaned more towards the blues. Like that spoke to me in a different way. Yeah. I love the technique involved and I, I think they're fantastic players. Yeah. My ear and my heart led me more towards, you know, the, the classic rock sounds, the blue sounds. That that to me, because again, that 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 touches the okay, Angela. <laughs> what's what's your sound as a player? And it was, it, you know, it was it was more lean, leaning towards that that type of style of music, definitely. That's awesome. That's awesome. So let's go. Let's go back to the beginning of our. Yeah. We don't have that much time with you left. We have about seven minutes or so. But let's talk about Petrelli's pick at Norman's Rare Guitars. Let's talk. Yeah. What, what's the story with that? So I, I gotta say, Norman Harris. All the folks, they're like family to me down there. Those of you who have not been to Norman's Rear Guitars in Tarzana, California, whenever this COVID stuff is over and you can hop on a plane, come visit. It's, it's, it's such a great place. I mean, there are guitars that I have never seen anywhere else that Norm has. And it's, it's absolutely insane. I was there um, a couple, like two years ago, and they had a triple O 42, like, pristine condition i believe it was 1943 like perfect this thing had been sitting under a bed or something it was incredible whoa um just has some, yeah just has some really cool guitars so i've been doing videos for them you know over the last couple of years and then they reached out and they're like hey do you want to do your own segment you know and you could just play whatever you like that's that's around the shop and highlight it and that whole thing and i said absolutely and we called it patrilli picks and you know there are great guitars that will show up. There might be a really, really cool, you know, strat from 1954 that I'm going to want to try out. And, and Norm just like hands it to me, here you go. Or there might be a really, really great, you know, 65 or even a 1937 Martin that they just got in. He's like, here, try this out. And I, I have to pinch myself because the guitars that they have there are just incredibly awesome. And I am so, so thankful <laughs> they let me go and play these damn things it's great i was gonna say how awkward is it when you have to leave and they have to like literally take three or four employees to pry it out of your hands <laughs> yeah it's, you know it's i have to leave my wallet in the car <laughs> they make you put your credit card out at the front to do this I mean, yeah i did buy i have bought one <laughs> instrument there i bought a beautiful 1960 martin tenor it's like all mahogany this thing just had a sound yeah i can't leave i can't leave without this thing so i had to take it home <laughs> that happens but, yeah i got there it's awesome, it's awesome. <laughs> so let's yeah, also can... oh what you say no 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 say what you're gonna say, right. say... No, no, no. i said you can check out these on the norman's rare guitars youtube channel just you know patrilli picks and you know there's also a lot of other great folks who, who come on in and, and then play slash and joe bonamassa are regulars and yeah it's it's it, it, it's great so 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 honored to be part of the gang over there all right so if i'm on tour i want you to take me to norm's norm's no, i'm serious you yeah you call me and we'll go I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. I'm more than happy to have. I'm always down to see a new guitar shop. I actually have never been there, so I'm I'm ready to party we'll with you. you. We'll get you on. We'll get you on. <laughs> we'll, we'll have some fun. We'll have nice. Some fun. So let's also talk about Jennifer Batten, who's a huge uh, Fluence endorser as well, Fishman endorser yes. in general. You're teaming up with her for the was it the Guitar Cloud Symposium? Yeah, Guitar Cloud Symposium. It is a four day clinic on Zoom because clearly we can't all get together right now. But we're going to be getting it together virtually. Um, myself, Jennifer Batten. So she played with Jeff Beck and Michael Jackson. We've got Vicki Genfin and uh, Gretchen Men. Just we're all teaming up. We're all playing. We're all teaching six different modules of, you know, of lessons. So I'm doing one on slide. 
Uh, I'm doing one on hybrid picking, you know, how to build your brand on social media, like these, these sorts of things. And, you know, Jennifer's do, doing some, some stuff on whammy bars. We've got Vicky doing stuff with open tuning and Gretchen is doing stuff on harmonics. So that, that, that kind of stuff. And it's, it's going to be really, really fun. And again, all levels too. So, so we're, we're including everybody. So come on in and join us. Um, but it's going to be a lot of fun, October 16th, 19th on zoom and you can check out all the info on guitar cloud symposium.com so yeah really looking forward and again very honored to be working with all those very very talented guitar players so I'm very honored very that's very awesome honored. that sounds like a big deal i i uh i'm so for years i i played ibanez guitars and i used to block my bridges so they would never go out of tune and then yeah. like uh and then like now i play basically ever tune bridges so i can't use a whammy bar but like my guitar player my other guitar player buzz he has a whammy bar on his guitar sometimes we switch on stage and like it's like I just got freed out of jail and I like out of whammy bar jail. So I would love to teach a whammy bar class because it would be the most annoying hour. <laughs> it's just me just like dive bombing in people's faces, standing on chairs, you know, flipping my hair back, just being weird. It would be awful. I'm glad I'm glad they hired a professional like Jennifer Batten because I wouldn't be mature enough. You know, I, I'm, I'm stoked because I don't do a lot of that stuff. Like, I don't really do a lot of tapping. I don't do a lot of whammy bar. So I'm really, really, like, I'm going to be a student. Don't yeah. tell anybody. I'm going to be a student you know, when I'm not teaching. <laughs> I'm so excited to learn from, from these wonderful musicians. Really, really looking forward to it. But yeah, come and hang out with us, folks. It'll be fun. Do, do yourself the favor. I, I don't know if you're, like, interest, interested in this type of music, but, like, White Lion. Have you ever heard of White Lion? Yeah. Okay. L- listen to the song Wait and learn the solo of weight. If you want to like do whammy bar or cool tapping stuff, Vito Brada is like one of my favorites. Right. Yeah. So That's cool. I'm, I, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm adding you on Instagram right now and I'm going to be looking for that video. I'm going to be like, wake up one morning and be like, she knows, she knows how to play weight. <laughs> there it is. I'm going to try real hard. I'm going to try. <laughs> That's, awesome. That's awesome. Do you have, do you have anything else that you want to promote? Are you doing like online lessons? Some guitar players do yes, that type of I- stuff. I teach online. I absolutely love teaching. I've been doing it the last three years and it is so fun to connect with folks from all over the world. Like I've got students from all over the world. It's incredibly humbling and awesome. Um, but yeah, reach out Angela Patrulli music.com slash booking, you know, come, come on by. I would love to teach you how to discover your inner rock star. I teach all levels to beginners to advanced. You want to learn that David Gilmore solo? I got you covered. You want to learn how to properly play an E minor seven? I got you covered there. So. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, <laughs> we ran out of time. This has been absolutely awesome. Angela, thank you so much for joining us. And Thank you so much. This was so fun. Yeah, I, I always have a good time with you. And, and everybody that's out there, thank you for ter- participating in, t- in our live uh, interactive Q&A. Make sure to go to our YouTube page, the Fishman YouTube page. Click the like and subscribe button. Also set your notifications so you don't miss out on these amazing events. Um, so also we're on iTunes and uh, Spotify for our Everything You Hear Is True podcast. So uh, now that I just name dropped everything that we do, it, it was great having you. Thank you so much. And so we'll see you soon. Thank you, thank you so much. Can't wait to see you guys. Can't Definitely. wait to come and visit. Definitely. All right, guys, take it easy.